hello from my dining room. I posted a few YouTube shorts on this space and had some additional questions. So I'm gonna dive a little deeper. We've got the arched bump out wall, the wine storage, pocket door cabinet, the Roman clay, the coffered ceiling, kind of a lot to unpack in here. So let's get started. Go ahead and start with the arched bump out wall because that was the first thing that I did. That was where this all started. I had a blank wall and I was like, that needs an arch. I don't know. There's no other explanation. This room is 12 feet by 12 feet, perfect square. Our table is nine feet, maybe eight. If you're gonna build a wall, you wanna get credit for it, right? So you needed it to be substantial enough without taking away a ton of space in the room. I also wanted this wall to serve some sort of purpose. I measured the width, the depth, whatever, of a wine bottle and it ended up being, I think, three inches of that. I knew that I could have a shelf that was three or four inches deep and still fit wine bottles, wine glasses, and make it functional. So we have. I had never built a wall before. Knew that it required two by fours, studs, if you will. I just made a frame and I built two rectangular shapes. I built them along the bottom. The larger rectangle went up top and I'll go into more detail later why I left the gap between the large rectangle and the small rectangle when I talk about the cabinet. A two by four is one and a half inches thick. So to get the bump out that six inches that I wanted, I just stacked four two by fours on top of one another. Once the frame was built for either side and for the pocket door cabinets, then it was all about getting the frame up for the arch. Relatively straightforward. You take a piece of plywood and you cut out the arch pattern that you want. The 12 foot wide wall, Remember, I'm factoring in those cabinet doors too. I knew that I couldn't have the arch wider than six feet because those cabinet doors would be approximately three feet each, right? And they need to be able to go into the wall. So all of that math you have to factor in to place. And so that's how I came up with the arch opening being six feet wide, each side of the wall being about three feet wide, giving me the 12 foot width of the room. I believe I used half inch thick plywood. It was either half inch or three quarters of an inch thick. You want it thick because that plywood is what you're screwing into studs with to hold it on the wall. But that difference was whether it was five and a half inches or five and a quarter inches is what the length of my two by fours were. I also added a bracket across the top. Again, everything that I'm doing is at that six inch bump out depth, just to give me something to screw the drywall into just an added added square footage. Frames up completely. That is when I did the drywall. Just take sheets of drywall, big of sheets as I could. Seams are hard. I want to avoid as many seams as you possibly can. I ended up using three large pieces and then a couple little pieces up at the top. You just put it all over your entire frame and then you cut the arch out of that as well. To bend the drywall for the inside of the arch, there's a couple different methods you can use. You can wet the drywall and bend it slowly as it dries or you can score the back, which is what I ended up doing. I just scored, did a line every inch, broke it myself, snapped it a little bit myself so that it wouldn't break, and then screwed that into those two by fours. To fix the seams, there's tape options out there. There's corner bead. I used a corner flex bead around the arch, and then I used this paper. I'll, I'll link all of the materials. You have joint compound and just a lot of mudding. Before this, I didn't realize that you're supposed to mud before you put the tape on. I had always put the tape on first and tried to mud over it. Good luck getting that to stick. You basically need to use the mud, the joint compound first as glue for the tape and then you mud over top of that again. It is not something that's gonna happen in one layer. I always thought that that was when you patch drywall, one layer of joint compound, you should be fine. And I was like, why can I still see the wire mesh through this? Lots of layers later that fully dry and then I sanded it down. I did wet sanding here. I don't highly recommend it. I just really hate dust. Sanding it is better. Regular sanding. I did wet sanding. I sweat a lot. It was exhausting, but it ended up working. While I was building the frame, I knew I had to incorporate the cabinet. Our table's really long. We don't have room to open the doors, the cabinet doors normally on hinges needed to be pocket doors. So I factored that into the frame. I made sure that I left a gap between the bottom portion of the frame and the top portion of the frame so that the pocket doors could open right into that opening. It hurt my brain to even figure out the calculations needed for that and like the, the thinking 20 steps ahead. So just give yourself patience and realize that it is going to be a beast. I also knew that I, I wouldn't be able to really 
easily build the inside of the cabinet once it was all into the wall. I just wanted it to be all done before I put any drywall. I got a bunch of different tracks that I tried and I had no luck with any of them. Ultimately, what ended up working was just routering a path for the doors. So whatever the width is of the plywood you're using, these are half inch plywood sheets that I cut the doors out of. I routed a hole slightly bigger than that so that they would easily be able to move back and forth. So the top board that's on, that the door slides in and out of, you router that a little bit deeper than the bottom. So when you wanna remove those doors, you simply lift them up into that deeper router path and you swing it out and then they can come out. So these doors can come out anytime, which is really convenient. I used one by sixes for the router top and bottom of these cabinets, but for the all of the inside pieces are constructed out of one by fours. So I did use two by fours along the sides that would be hidden behind the drywall once I do drywall it, but it gave me something to attach the one by fours too to make sure that it was really sturdy. So I used glue, I used nails, I used screws where I was able to, if I was able to screw in from the back side. It helps to get really straight boards for the one by fours and make sure that everything is level, make sure that everything is very tight. Take, you know, cutting slivers at a time to make sure that it fits as tightly as possible. And then obviously wood glue helps to secure everything as well. I painted the whole inside of the cabinet alabaster, which is the same color as the baseboards around the rest of the room. So that kind of tied it all together. And then I had to add support pieces to either side so that when the cabinet doors do open into the wall, they don't fall down at all. They open completely level. I added pull wrap just as a fun detail and stained it all dark walnut. I'll put a picture of the type of stain. It's a tintable water-based stain from Lowe's. I did have to play around a little bit with the trim around these pocket doors because I wanted it to look as built in, as finished, and just as nice as possible. So I did, again, I will link the materials that I used. I did use, I believe it's called a J bead to kind of wrap itself around the drywall so that there was not a rough drywall edge and it just looked a lot cleaner. I also added a little piece of screen molding to close up more of the gap. I know this might seem a little extra, but the return air vent was driving me nuts. So I built a frame and then I covered it in half rounds so that airflow could still obviously get to the return air vent. And then I attached it using magnets so that I could take it down, you know, to clean the vents or whatever I might need to do in the future. I ended up deciding that it needed a shelf. It just looked a little bare. So I added a shelf. I made it the easiest shelf ever. I took three, one, uh, three two by twos and just layered them on top of each other. So the first one is screwed in to studs. The second one is screwed into the first one. And then the third one, I nailed it because I could um, glue and nail it to the two that were screwed into studs. And then so much easier to cover up those nail holes. Roman clay. It is a beautiful thing. I love the technique. It adds texture to a wall. Like it makes you just want to like rub a wall. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. But man, is it a lot of work. It is expensive. Go into it understanding that it costs money and it takes a while to figure out the technique. With every DIY project I've ever done, I have to remind myself to be patient and it just takes time. I did three layers, three layers. Get a good podcast, get a good audiobook. It is therapeutic at first. <laughs> then you gotta work on powering through. I used Portola paints. I've heard just amazing things about them. I've seen them used everywhere and they were great. Customer service was great. They helped me pick out a color that I wanted, gave me some advice with the technique. They were awesome. I went with Gem. The third coat that I did, I mixed in a little bit of grayish 
to differentiate the top coat from the under. Just give me a little more credit for it, but ultimately it's a pretty subtle effect that I went with. You could go as drastic as you want. You can pretty much go nuts with rum and clay. I know this video is getting really long, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a part two and go into the coppered ceiling more, just so I'll give you a little break. So stay tuned.